Sophocles plus Celestila. Sounds very underwhelming. What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review of episode 69 titled Shine On Starship Celestila. Now, if you recall, the last episode that we re recapped was the most disgusting episode in history. The kids are taking the day to get job experience at the Pokemon Center. Nurse Troy winds up being sick, so the kids have to take over everything for the Pokemon Center for the day. And a Team Skull Grunt's Garbodor has clogged fingertips, and they have to clean the poison out of it. Very, very disgusting. Now, in today's episode, as the title does say, Shine On Starship Celestila. That is hard to say. Try saying that. But anyway, it's very hard to say. Um, but this episode was interesting. At the same time, it was kind of underwhelming. If you did check out this episode, make sure you let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Let me know what your favorite part was. And let me know if you have some different opinions than I do. Because I would imagine you probably could. Now the very first thing that we see in the episode is Sophocles' family camping in the bamboo fields. If you watched any of my reviews so far, you know I'm not a fan of Sophocles. So I was already feeling it's going to be an episode focused on Sophocles and Celestila. I couldn't have been more right. But his parents are admiring the nature that's going on around them and Sophocles is inside the tent. He's plugging away at his computer and he's like, you know, I don't want to go out and look right now. The moon will be at its best in an hour, and then I'll go out to look. He dozes off. His parents go to sleep. Togedomaru is just like staring at him. Just straight up staring at him. Wakes up, wakes him up, and they go for a walk. So Togedomaru is lighting up the area around. You see Charge a Bug behind them, and they park themselves on a cliff. And just off the cliff, you can see the moon does actually wind up being exactly what he had thought it was. So they, he starts talking about this story um, called Starship Ka Kaguya, um, Starship Kaguya, which basically is a star that fell from the moon, uh, bringing a bamboo sprout um, that seemed to have a spirit. It had a face to it. It was being taken care of by an old couple, almost being worshipped by this old couple, um, but its presence made the forest around it Hey, the life in the forest died and the villagers around started to complain about it and wanted to take it out but the old couple defended the defended it defended it until it finally grew and took off back towards the moon and you can tell by the side by the shape of it that it is celestila after it left though the bamboo that was around came back to life and everybody seemed to be happy again so that was the story that sophocles told um, and he notices down below the cliff where he's sitting that there's no life, there's no bamboo growing down there. And Togedomaru is peeking over and tumbles over and falls down, resulting in all of them falling down. And that's where the intro happened. So all of that, all of that intro, it was a long intro, shapes up Sophocles and Celestila. Not really my favorite. But he lands on the tip of something when he gets to the bottom of it, and as he digs it out, he realizes that it's a large metal bamboo. Togedomaru then lights up the area around because the moon gets covered by a cloud, so there's no light. Togedomaru lights it up, and they notice, oh my god, this thing has a face that they're looking at. And they're like, wait, could this be the starship Kagura, Kaguya, whatever it's called? Kaguya that he was talking about before? And off in the trees, Tapu Koko is watching him. The next day at school, Sophocles is telling the stories to all the kids that happened the night before, and all the kids decide, we want to go, we want to go see this thing. So after school, they all go out and see it, and they're all talking about it, and one of them's like, we should dig it up. And Sophocles is like, great, I brought shovels for everyone. And all the girls are like, did you bring me, did you, did you tell us all this so that we could help you shovel this thing out? So anyway, they decide to dig it out, and the intro song plays while they're doing this, and it's a, it's a nice little scene where you see them all digging, and Ash is like, oh my gosh, how big is this thing? It's going to take us forever. And then it shows Chargebug up on top of the Celestila, calling out to what winds up being a whole bunch of grubbin that come down and help dig it up. So eventually, by the evening time, it's all dug up. And Ash asks, asks Rotom if there's any info on this Pokemon, and Rotom's like, 
Oh, no, in no info, but I want to be the first to record info about it. After they theorize that maybe this is an Ultra Beast, Sophocles gets kind of sad. He doesn't want to put it into a Beast Ball. He wants to investigate the Pokemon more. Now at home, Sophocles is analyzing just how old Celesteela might be. He determines by the layers of dirt that he was buried in that it must be about 200 years old. Now while they're at school and he's telling them that this thing is 200 years old, the group get an emergency call from the Ultra Guardians about a new Ultra Beast. So they all descend into their base, they change into their Ultra Guardians for or Ultra Guardians outfits, um, and they get a call from Lusamine. Lusamine, Wick, and Burnett have determined that they found an Ultra Beast, and they show the Celestela. You can see the shot of surprise in Sophocles' face, and they're like, "Yep, this thing is about 200 years old," etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Sophocles is like, "Well, we kind of knew that. We kind of already saw this thing, and..." You know, we, we didn't really know what to do at the point. They just didn't want it to get taken taken away from. But the scientists are fearful that if Celestela launches itself to the moon, the surrounding area will be incinerated by its launching. So they need to figure out how to get that contained. And their idea is to catch this thing so that they can preserve it. It will be safe. It's not like they're going to do bad things with it. Or will they? No, as far as we know, they're not going to do anything bad with it. Um, but they just want to catch it and keep it in a safe place until they can have it launch somewhere that it won't be destroying anything. We get to see the awesome launching sequence, the animation where they're all taken off with their ride Pokemon to head where Celesteela is. Now, as they land, Team Rocket is also there and they see the kids landing and they're like, what's this thing? And they overhear them talking. Uh, because Rotom had downloaded all the information that they had, that the scientists had about this Celesteela, he says that it's the Rocket Pokemon. Well, of course Team Rocket is going to want the Rocket Pokemon. Uh, but while they're, while they're fantasizing about getting this Rocket Pokemon, Sophocles realizes that maybe Celesteela does have enough gas already stored up and could be launching any time, especially now that it's been dug out. Um... But Sophocles is like, we need to build a wall so that the bamboo around won't get destroyed. Obviously, there's probably not going to be that much time because this thing could launch at any point. And Lily's like, hmm, I have an idea. So as she has that idea, we see Team Rocket and their Meowth machine, their Meowth uh, robot come up and they start a battle. And they're trying to get the Rocket Pokemon. They're trying to get Celesteela. So they all battle, they all battle. Ash and Kiawe distract the robot while the girls wind up building the wall. And Sophocles is doing absolutely nothing except standing by keeping Celesteela company. He's absolutely worthless, as usual. Now, Lily's plan was actually pretty good because it involved all of the ride Pokemon and all of their Pokemon kind of working together in order to build this wall of rock slide and ice beam and just a wall of rocks. And eventually, Celesteela launches itself. And as Celesteela launches itself, Meowth launches the, the arm, the hand of the Meowth rocket, and it gets blown back at them because of the launch pressure. And Beware swoops in, protects them, and Celesteela flies off to the moon. Now, all of the Pokemon, all of the gang is like, hey, let's go say bye. And it flashes to Lusamine, and Lusamine's like, even though we didn't catch it, that's okay, because this keeps... Alola protected. And that's really the only like story based thing that I could think of. I'm really curious what Lusamine, like what her role is going to be. Is she really going to be a good person as it sh as it seems or is she going to wind up not being such a good person? I'm I'm very curious to see which route they wind up taking it. But that was the end of the episode. In the preview for next week, we see that they're at um, Kiawe's parents' farm in Akala, and they're just visiting around there, but there's an intruder with an Electivire that's fighting and apparently defeats Kiawe's Marowak. But Marowak comes back with a new blue flame move. I didn't even recognize what it could be. Maybe it's Flare Blitz? I don't, I don't have a clue. But it looks like next week we're going to have a, a Kiawe Marowak development episode. So that's it. That's all I got. If you did check out this episode, as I said, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Let me know your favorite moments and let me know if you have any different opinions. We will see you next time. Until then, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.